Hey guys, it's Brianna. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to keep your soul centered on a daily basis. Really living with a conscious mind and keeping your awareness up throughout the day. I kind of like to call this living with your eyes wide open, remaining connected to your center. We're also going to be talking about 3D and 5D consciousness and kind of what the difference is and determining the difference so you can choose to live with your higher self in mind. It's really important to stay awake even as we continue to live in the 3D world because it allows us to respond instead of react to certain circumstances. Obviously in our 3D world currently, um, it's kind of chaotic and it's a time that's a little stressful. So when we're choosing to live in this higher state, we're not bypassing what is to be seen but opening our eyes wider to what we're missing and opening our eyes more to ourselves, what we need, what, what our body is calling us to do, and how to act and respond accordingly from a place that is from our higher self and from our soul's needs and wants. So in order to keep your awareness high throughout the day, there are three main points that I want you to be aware of and consciously decide to live your life through these modalities. You really need to be open to setting intentions. You need to be open to creating rituals for yourself. And you need to be open to setting boundaries. So intentions are really the foundation, how we transition from task to task, setting the tone for your day, and deciding really what you wish to gain with the outcome. Rituals are the actions or the point where you come home to yourself. They're normally seen as physical tools to help tap you back in. Boundaries are the energetic field in which we move and we play. We can decide how big or how small our boundaries need to be. Boundaries allow you to live in the 3D world and to learn lessons and to experience things, but they also set you up for responding to those experiences while in the 5D. So 3D is what we see and know and experience and in our human life every day, where things take place where we choose to live physically. And 5D is a frequency that comes from our heart center. It's how you remain a sense of peace and calm in the 3D world. So that's kind of the grounding work that you need to know before I go in to show you the vlog of my day and how I continue to bring those three tools to bring me back into my awareness whenever I'm feeling a little lost or disconnected. Hey guys, good morning. Um, kind of new to vlogging, so bear with me. But um, basically what I did um, when I first woke up is set my intention of creating before I consumed. Creating can be anything. It's really just taking the time to do things for you and that come that come from you, your ideas, your thoughts, your imagination, what have it. Um, consuming is very easily things that are outside of us. So first thing, waking up in the morning, grabbing your phone, that's consuming somebody else's ideas, works, images. Um, I really like to start off my day by creating because I'm really taking care of myself first, I'm thinking of myself first, and um, I'm showing up for myself first. I also know that one of my triggers can be my phone, so waking up in the morning and first going to that I know is not going to set me up for being in a conscious and aware and awake state. Um, as we open our eyes, I'm ready to live today and every day with my eyes wide open. I think cleaning up the dishes is a really nice meditative practice to do because um, you're also taking care of your home. Well, that's another thing I like to do is take care of my home and things that I need to tidy up before I move on to my actual morning rituals. Another way I like to create is kind of setting my intentions about my day by lighting candles. I lit one in my bathroom. I lit one in our bedroom um, and as I enter the kitchen to prepare my meals and start my day, I'm also going to light just a few more, start my incense. You know, if you're someone who's still a little bit tired in the morning, just wake up with ease and calm. You don't want to wake up in an erratic state, you want to wake up um, and take the day as you can. If that's peacefully just easing into your day, opening up, like so be it. 
Most days I like to do my morning ritual at my little um, sacred space over here before I eat, but again, in the morning I'm just trying to listen to myself. I'm not trying to rush anything or I, I don't need to is the reasoning behind that. So I just really like to take my time and listen to whatever my body wants to say. Um, you can do a body test if you're if you want to really lead with your soul, lead with your heart. You can just be intuitive as you are always. So to finish off kind of my morning routine before I go do the rest of the things I need to do today, um, I actually made a really detailed version of my morning routine talking about why I like to tap into certain senses to heighten my psychic abilities. Um, and how I just come to myself. I normally communicate with my spirit guides. I do tarot and I journal. Those are like the main things that I do. Again, I have a more um, detailed version of my spiritual morning routine, which I can link below for you if you'd want. But yeah, so basically I just do those, those things. Um, today I'm gonna do a Mercury and Cancer spread and journal on that a little bit because um, that's coming up very soon and I want to get prepped. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to show you that a little bit and then I'll meet you in the afternoon to show you how I reconnect after I go throughout my day. change because I have a Akashic record reading this afternoon with a client moving more into kind of my afternoon routine don't really have much planned today besides that so um, yeah I just want to talk about afternoon routines rituals awareness what kind of that looks like um, for me personally the afternoon can be a little bit tricky um, for me to live a more conscious life I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Like many of us, we go to work, we socialize, we, and in and out of those transitions, it's really easy for us to kind of zone out and not be as conscious or aware of the thoughts or actions that we might be doing, especially ones that are negative or harmful or toxic. I really urge you to not let those transitions, because they're very easy for us to tap out, to let it get you down. What I do urge you to do in those moments is to take a really big deep breath in and out. Also sound is really important too. When we leave the house we think of like, I can't bring all of my rituals. When we leave the house you know we can of course bring our intentions with us, the intentions that we make for the afternoon. Um, it's a little bit harder maybe to bring some of those tangible tools for our rituals like crystals and other things that I know and love. But what's great about the breath is that it can be taken with us anywhere. And it's honestly one of the most important tools that we do have because it is the easiest and fastest way to connect with our soul is through our breath. You need to tell yourself that it's okay to like step away, especially if you're in a place or a situation where you feel triggered. These triggers can come from other people, as they sometimes do. They can come from your own um, ego stories, inner child work, things like that. So my biggest intention throughout my afternoon is to work with my ego. She tends to show up a lot more in the afternoon than when I'm aware of her in the morning or the evening. You know, you can always in the afternoon, especially when these things, if these things come up for you, like they do for me ask your ego questions. Say I look in the mirror and I'm not feeling too hot that day. <laughs> I can ask myself, you know, am I truly what I think I am or what is the deeper story behind this? What is the self-worth story I've been telling myself? Is it something from childhood? Is it something someone made me feel a long time ago? Possibly in an old relationship? You never know. Um, Asking it questions gives your ego a voice, which is all they truly want. They do not like to be silenced, and that silence 
you know, it just bubbles up inside more and more. You can also set an intention and create boundaries with your ego by telling it how it can best serve you. You have to use what works best for you. What awareness is, is being in a state of peace and being calm. So whatever makes you naturally feel that without it being forced, you're in a conscious state of mind. Your, your awareness is heightened and that's the best place to be if you want to experience the things that you want to experience and manifest the things you want to manifest. Hey guys, just checking in with you all. I have a client at four o'clock. It is currently uh, 1.47. And I've just been doing some school related work, which is work that I'm more forced to do, not that I want to do it on my own. So a practice that I really like to do um, that kind of puts me in a better mood or mindset before I do work that I'm kind of forced to and it's not just on my own, like, um, free will is doing a line activation and I've talked about this before it's developed by Ashley Wood she's one of my Akashic Record teachers um, so yeah I'm just gonna do that to get me into just a little bit of a better headspace as I finish this want to be clear-minded and all good for when I um, open the records for my client later on today Hey guys, I'm back in my bed, ready to be cozy, um, to kind of get into my night routine. So, evening awareness is not much different than morning or afternoon awareness. You still are looking for the three things, which is your intention, your ritual, and your boundaries. Once you kind of understand and know yourself, then you can decide what kind of boundaries, intentions, and rituals you need to set up for yourself. So someone like me who likes a little bit of more of a, of a quiet night, maybe that includes like Netflix, reading a book, um, but also as you're choosing these things, like make them a part of your ritual, make them intentional. Maybe your intention for those moments are, I am going to relax, I am going to let go of all of today's thoughts and worries and as you go into that activity you have that intention in your back of your mind and it's a little bit more conscious rather than I'm just gonna disconnect and forget about my whole day or just like numb myself from the day I had if that makes sense same thing goes for when you're choosing to go out are you doing that to disconnect or are you doing that to have fun and let loose and and be social with your friends for me specifically, if I'm doing like Netflix or a video game or something like that, um, I set my intentions, but then I also like to do an activity that's a little bit more connected to my soul um, or that either helps me enhance in my my soul suit or my higher conscious. So um, for me, that's definitely doing some self-learning or like self-development work. Um, that could be journaling, reading a book. Um, that helps me better to understand my soul or my life's path. And a boundary again that I've set myself for is turning off my phone before bed and leaving a good amount of time so that um, I'm not triggered by anything before bed. If I see something by accident or something comes up that I wasn't prepared for, um, giving that kind of hour to 30 minutes or even two hours if, if that's good for you before you know you're gonna fall asleep. So even though you're physically closing your eyes, remaining awake is really important at nighttime, especially to set you up for the next day and, and starting this process all over again and, and being intentional in your daily practices and, and being here and having eyes wide open and having that true awareness and awareness for yourself, your body, and your mind, and your soul. I am in no means a master of any of these intentions, rituals, or boundaries, but I am making the intention to work on them every day and incorporate them more and more every day of my life. And with that, I'm gonna get ready for bed. <laughs> 